After a long silence of more than one year, Vita 3K Android has finally received a brand new update, and this time it's not just any random build. We are talking about Build 21, officially bumping the emulator version. This is the first Android build after MacDo's old V12 from June 2024. That alone makes this update huge. What makes this release even more interesting is that the Android version is now fully merged into Vita 3K's main master codebase, making future updates faster, cleaner, and much more consistent. The developers themselves have confirmed this update includes massive Android-specific performance boosts or new features. Build 21 focuses on long-term stability and future growth. On top of that, PS button support has been added, overlay buttons are finally fixed so they don't go off-screen, dialogue positioning and aspect ratio issues are corrected, and many under the hood improvements have been made. So even you can see instant FPS jumps, this update officially puts Vita 3K Android back on track. In short, Vita 3K Android is alive, unified, and moving forward again, and that's exactly why this update is such a big deal. So guys, let's get started. First of all, Vita 3K's official GitHub has changed which means from now on you need to download and install the emulator only from the new official repository. Once the installation is complete, open the emulator and the very first thing you'll see is the language selection screen. Choose your preferred language and tap next. After that, the emulator will ask you to select a storage path. You can keep it on default if you don't want any hassle, or customize it according to your storage setup. Once done, tap next, and now the emulator will prompt you to install the required firmware files. You need to install all the firmware files one by one, exactly as instructed. Don't skip this step because the emulator won't work properly without them. After installing everything, tap next again. Now you'll land on the interface settings screen. Here, I recommend switching the layout to grid mode, because it gives the app a much cleaner and more console-like look. Tap next, and at this point, the emulator is almost ready. You'll now see a large dialog box. At the bottom, there's an option called show next time. Make sure to uncheck this option, then tap close. After that, the emulator will ask you to create a user profile. You can enter any name you like and select an avatar. Once the user is created, simply tap on it, and that's it. Guys, your Vita 3K emulator is now fully set up and ready to use. Now follow me carefully. The next step is installing games. Vita 3K supports PKG, ZIP, and VPK files, so you have multiple options. If you want a detailed guide, you can tap the eye icon at the top how to install games properly. For this video, I selected a ZIP file and installed it directly. Installation time depends on your device's performance. But once it's done, the game is ready to play. You can launch the game immediately, but if you want the best performance and smooth gameplay, keep watching. Go to configuration, then open settings, and head into the GPU section. Here, you can install a GPU driver based on your device. This driver part is mainly for Snapdragon users. If you're using a Mali GPU, you don't need to worry, your driver is already optimized and pre-installed in the emulator. Now I'll show you the settings that can boost performance by up to 4x, while still maintaining good visual quality. First, change the screen filter to nearest. This gives a noticeable performance boost, although textures may look slightly pixelated. Next, you'll see the resolution scaling option. You can customize this based on your device. On low-end devices, it's better to keep it at default. But if you're on a powerful device, 2x or even 4x resolution works smoothly and significantly improves image quality. Below that, you'll find the FPS hack option. This works in some games and can noticeably improve FPS, but in unsupported games it may cause fast forwarding. This option is mainly useful for low-end devices, so test it carefully. To further unlock the emulator's full performance potential, go to memory mapping method. Here, try different options like double buffer, native buffer, or even disabling it, and see which one works best for your device. The recommended option is native buffer, as it provides a solid speed boost across the emulator. However, if your device doesn't support it properly, just stick to the default setting. Next, enable turbo mode. This setting pushes your GPU to full load and delivers a direct performance performance boost. Use it wisely, especially if your device heats up quickly. If you want to monitor performance in real time, you can enable the performance overlay from the emulator section to check FPS while gaming. And finally, under the controls menu, you can fully customize on-screen buttons or even connect an external controller for a console-like experience. So guys, if you've watched this video till the end, you now clearly understand how the Vita 3K emulator works, how to install games, and how to tweak the right settings for maximum performance. To test everything, I ran Persona 5, one of the most popular PS Vita titles, and as you can see, the game runs smoothly at full FPS. This proves that with the right setup and settings, Vita 3K on Android can deliver an amazing PS Vita emulation experience. So guys, that's it for this video. If this guide helped you understand Vita 3K better and you were able to set it up properly on your device, make sure to leave a like, it really supports the channel and motivates me to bring more content like this. If you still have any questions, settings issues, or game-specific problems, Problems, drop them in the comments and I'll try my best to help you out. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more emulator updates, performance guides, and real gameplay tests. Thanks for watching, enjoy your PS Vita games on Android, and I'll see you in the next one.